Excitement. Something that we forget. Right? If we look at ourselves every day, it's like working, gotta go this, and like serious, and then here's the inspiration to laugh a little bit, to enjoy life. It's the things we enjoy, right? So enjoy <laughs> the background. Right? All right. Welcome everyone to the Spirit Society of San Diego. We are so happy we're here. And hello to our friends online. Many blessings to you. Hope you enjoy our talking of this morning and it could be afternoon, evening, whenever you are watching this. We will start with our inspirational message that our friend Flavia will read to us. Good morning, everyone. I'm going to read a chapter from Happy Life by Joanna De Angelis psychographed by Givaldo Franco. Don't fear your accusers when they slander you and want to drag you into inglorious battles. But if you are accused and the fact is true, thank God for the chance to make a timely rectification for your own well-being. It is always best to right your wrongs while the victim is still around. Postpone debits grow with accruing interest to becoming harder to replay. Thank you. I will ask our friend Glossia to do our uh, opening prayer. Be present for a moment in our bodies, bringing us here just for one hour, the beginning of this new week, hoping that we all can be open with our hearts and minds to receive the inspiration and message that will help us through our journey on earth. As this new year begins, let us begin new as well, with new hopes, new goals, and a new pathway that will lead us to all the lessons that Jesus has taught us. And so be it. So be it. All right, so the topic today, so I can see everybody, the topic today is overcoming afflictions. So let's just reflect a little bit. It's nothing new. We know what an affliction is. That is pain, discomfort, suffering. And my goal today is to do some introduction, talk a little bit of affliction, our behavior, and then go towards action. Because, okay, I'm suffering right now. What am I going to do about it? Right? Okay. So, many of us have that childish um, expectation. And by the way, everything I'm saying here... I've been through, and I've done it. Nobody's judging anybody because we are human beings and we are everyday work on ourselves. So we have that expectation that we will wake up in the morning and everything is going to be perfect, right? Well, don't you love this? For me, is I wake up 5 o'clock to go to work, full of energy, and I have my breakfast, I go to work. All my students don't have any problems. And this is my favorite, I come home and dinner is ready. Ah, oh, right? And, and then I do something fun and, you know, and go to bed, everything's perfect. Oh, by the way, no pain. 
no pain. A day that I don't have pain after bending, you know, in those little tables for the five years old because your back's like this. <laughs> and I come and everything is perfect. I won't lie. There are days they are just like this. It happens. But there are days then it's not like that. And we have like, we might not have a perfect day, but we have perfect moments. And we should celebrate. So, we know that this, is, this doesn't happen all the time. <laughs> and then there are events that we are not expecting. For example, your car breaks down. You're not expecting. If your car was running really well, something could happen. And okay, I have to deal with this. So we have a lot of things that happen, they are unexpected. And there are others that we say it's unexpected, but actually, they are expected. If we stop and think and look, the behavior, the actions that happened before, and then something happens to go, oh, wow, it was coming. Can you tell something that happens to you and you, you knew was coming? because we are not listening, we are not paying attention to our body. Our body tells us every time what's going on. Somebody did something, we behave in a certain way, and then suddenly this happens. I was tell, I'm gonna be telling a lot of my foot that I broke in three, I had three fractures. And that day that I tripped over at the door, I was like, I was upset, I was mad, there was something going on in my life, I was a lot of things happening. And then I didn't see the trash hole, I was talking and so on, boom, fell, broke my tooth, three fractures. Whose fault is this? Mine. I could blame my husband so easy, right? It's his fault! You were not here near me! Why didn't you hold me? No. Things were escalating to get to that point. So when something happens, stop and think. Did I cause this? Did something, things were happening to get to that, to that point? And I'm not saying, see, you see, you did it. It's your fault, a bad person. No, we are human beings. There are days that we are very, you know, joyful. There are days there's so much going on in our lives that it's hard to handle. And it's okay. And it's okay to be upset and mad and whatever it is. And, but it's important to understand. So, the afflictions that happened in our lives have caused in the present. We caused the law of cause and effect. We can't run away from the cause of, of cause and effect, right? And others that we learn a lot in Spiritism is past lives. We did something in our past lives. Then now we have this life here to learn to get better, to repair. It's not punishment. God doesn't punish anybody. They go, well, you didn't do well in second grade, Bernadette, I guess you have to do second grade again. You need to go back and relearn. And God loves us so much that gives us that opportunity to relearn. For example, let's say somebody that in one lifetime was very wealthy and didn't do a good use of his or her wealth, was very greedy, hurt people, and lots of things in that area. So when he or she comes back in a future life, this person comes, um, I would say poor, with a lot of financial stability and struggle a lot. So now that spirit is learning the value of money, the value of helping, 
But it doesn't mean that this person now has to suffer that whole life. Oh, you're going to be poor and you're going to suffer and I have food. No, because God gives us this brain to think, free choice for us to work all the time to get better. Stop blaming God for all the devil. <laughs> What I hear, the devil made me do it. Oh, the devil made me, you know, do this. So stop blaming and take, we need to take responsibility. I was also remember one story, I think it was from Chico that he saw, and if it's not, forgive me, if you know the story of who did it, I think it was Chico Xavier that he saw, uh, I think, a child or a person with no arms and legs, and he was like, oh my God, he's suffering so much. And I think Emmanuel told him, no, this, this, this child is, is just where, or this grown up, I don't know, where he or she needs to be. Because this person in past life, or in several lives, try to commit suicide and try no, succeeded. Every lifetime kill himself. So now, in this life, he came with the arms and legs so he could not harm himself. And being able to live a whole life. And you don't see like this, oh, because you come with the arms and legs, oh, you're gonna just suffer because God also give good parents and a good support for the person, it's not like this, you're gonna suffer. Okay, you're gonna come like this. But it's all for us to learn. And that's the idea um, of the suffering and pain, for us to grow and get better, right? So what kind of afflictions do we really have? I have here the five most common. I put in an order, but it doesn't have to be this order because the most painful is the one that you are going through right now. It doesn't matter. For a child is not having a pencil. That's really bad for, it depends whether, is it locked? No. Good morning. Number one, relationships. Oh, God. It's hard to deal with people. <clears throat> but it's hard to deal with ourselves too. We are not perfect. We have our, <laughs> you know, our things that people have to put up with us. But when we look at somebody, it's like, oh, I see how bad he is, how bad she is. But we have our temper. So relationships, and that makes us suffer. It makes us go through this pain. Second one is health. Health problems. And we have to be careful because some health problems could be really unexpected and other health problems is if you look back, if you're eating a lot and if you're not being healthy on exercising, there you go. Third one, finances, money. Oh, this is a, a, a cause for divorce in many relationships. <laughs> Money. Financial is, is a problem. Um, job, which is related to finances and also relationship. Gosh, working? You have to deal with relationship. You have to deal with money. <laughs> and a lot of things. And the last one is loss of a loved one. Loss in general could be a pet. I'm, I, when I lost my, my dog, my dog put it away, uh, put it down, it was extremely painful. You can lose someone that you love, family, friends. COVID, oh my gosh, I lost a lot of people. And what, I struggled a lot dealing with the loss. Loss of freedom. We were all stuck in the house. <laughs> Could not go out. Jobs and everything else. All right, so probably 
us here, we have been through this. In the past, now, it's going to happen in the future. And the list grows. I got the five most common. So what to do? The problem is we are not prepared for the pain. Many of us, depending, depending on your state of mind, there are days that I bring it on. I can handle whatever comes my way. I wake up and uh, there are days it's like, uh, anything that I see, oh, that's it. <laughs> I'm very emotional. Everybody hates me. The world sucks. <laughs> I don't know what to do. So what? That happens. But have the awareness of developing the spiritual muscle. We go to the gym, we exercise. Where's the spiritual muscle? When we walk on the street and that car comes out of nowhere and hits you, go, where? Well, what, what, what? I was not expecting. So let's get it stronger. It's very important. How do I get stronger? And I've been th through so many difficult situations, and I'm sure all of you. And I had friends then ask me, how did you manage? And you're still smiling? Number one for me was the Spiritism. This philosophy helped me logically, we logic, understand the cause of suffering and pain and build the spiritual muscle to keep going because there are days i said that's it i'm done closing business i'm not going anywhere shut down right so spiritism helped me so much and if it, does, it doesn't have to be it it could be another philosophy it could be another spiritual teachings but we need that spirituality that God, whatever you understand, to help you go. Second, keep studying. If you feel you're depressed, go learn about depression. If your affliction is health-related, go find out what's going on, what kind of medicine, what kind of tea I can eat, right? Whatever it is, try to do something. Prayer, pray, pray, pray. That's how I did. And friends, we need to have a support system. We don't have to do everything on our own. There are days that we just can't. We can't. Then that's why I have mommy. My daughter is 26, 25 years old. <gasps> mommy, I can't today. Okay, breathe. What can we do? What do you need? Just need just vent? Okay, vent. <laughs> Do you have a support system? If not, start getting one. And if you don't have it for me, coming to this country and not having any family was one of the, my biggest problems. I, have my, I had my boyfriend or husband, but that's it. And if you don't, now you do. Because we are here for you. If you need somebody to talk to, if you need help, we are here. We need a support system, somebody that's not going to judge you, somebody that will listen, but also the person that will help you to go through and find solutions because it's easy just to be a victim, right? You got to be careful getting, oh, I'm a victim. Look what a horrible life. It's just me, me, me. First of all, there is no victim. Whatever is happening to us, there is a cause. There is something for us to learn. Or complaining. Be careful. It's okay to complain a little bit. I have my sister, and I, she knows, okay, I'm calling to complain. Go for it. <clears throat> She says, I'm going, I'm very emotional. Okay. Do you want to just complain, complain? Go. 
So it's like 10 minutes complaining, judging, because she's emotion, emotional, right? Reason? Zero. Blah, 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 blah. And okay, all right. Thank you. But tomorrow I call you and we're going to come up with some solutions, okay? <laughs> and we do it. She says, okay, therapy. What if we call in and, and listen to music together? Let's do some drawing, whatever it is. But be careful because we don't realize when we are leaving the problem, it is intense. It's that war inside of us. And then we complain. But I call, be careful, you're going to develop a case of comp complainantitis. <laughs> and people get tired, right? Your friends. Okay, one day, two days, and then, but every single day I call you, well, that's all you talk about it. I, I, I'm, I'm here, I can see your faces, and they can't. Everybody's like, mm -hmm. mm hmm, I'm sure you've been through a situation of a friend that is complaining, 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 and he doesn't stop. But be careful because we've been in the situation too. I guarantee you. Right? So, now what? What are we going to do? So, I have here eight steps that we can do. Suggestion. And, of course, I'm based on things that I read in Spiritism and what I've used. And there are days that I use all these and it helped, and there are days that I could not do this alone, and that's when I call a friend and say, help me, and it's okay. Please ask for help. It's okay. It's okay. We are here. You have friends. And you know what we forget? That we have our spiritual guide right there sitting. 24 hours, okay, here's Bernadette again. She's going through the same problems, and she's not looking at me, hello, hello. And then I don't pay attention, I go, that's it, I'm gonna take action. Then it does something just to, to wake us up. You know, it's like you go to the beach and suddenly the water is so cold and you go in the water go, <gasps> we woke you up. When was last time? You prayed for your spiritual guide. Say, hey, dude, do that. <laughs> hey, you. Okay, I'm going to vent. I'm going to complain right now. <laughs> but after that, help me out with some suggestion. Give me strength. And don't, don't pray like, solve my problem. Oh, no, it's like, show me the way. What do I do now? Because it's hurting. And when I pray to my guardian angel, I, this is me, okay? I'm on my knees and I'm crying many, many times. I say, I don't know what to do. So let's go. Number one, acceptance. We have to accept. 50% of the problem is accepting. The other one is find some solution. So accept whatever is happening. Broke my foot. To be honest, the beginning was not accepting. I was so angry. Because I used to help everybody do everything, and now I was there depending on somebody to cook for me, help me. I was angry. But when I finally accepted, it got so much easier. Accept. Two. One, acceptance. Second, pray. We just talk about it. It's so important to pray. Right? And have hope. Don't let anybody take away your hope. Because things will not last forever. Although when we are living, it feels like eternity. <laughs> but you can do it. And if you look in the past, how many things you overcame? And we, you did it because you can, and God knows that you can. It's just we forget about it. We got all entangled with all the mess in our lives. Three, take action. 
start taking action. When I finally accepted that I fractured my foot, I go, okay, I need a new scooter. <laughs> Take action. I can't cook, friends, I need food. I had my support system and my friends were coming and bringing me food. Take action. And it doesn't, and whatever action you take is not gonna solve the problem overnight. It takes time, but you just have to do one little thing a day, right? Um, number four, empower yourself. What do we do? We empower the problem. We make the problem so huge. Like problem becomes God. Like, oh, it's growing. The more that we talk about, the more that we complain, who is greater? You are greater. I read the said here, that, that saying that I love online. Don't tell God how big your problem is. Tell your problem how big God is. Empower yourself, not the problem. Five, focus on the lesson, not on the pain. All their energy is like, oh, my foot, my foot, my foot. And what am I learning? I learned that I have wonderful friends. I learned the power of prayer. We focus on a negative. There's the story that I shared here before, and in a real one, that this lady came to, to this uh, minister in a church complaining that everything hurt, she was so much pain. And he looked at her and said, okay, honey, tell me what does not hurt? And she said, my toe. Okay, so then every day you thank God for your toe. And she does, thank God for my toe, pray for your toe. Thank you, my toe doesn't hurt, everything else hurts. Um, but not your toe. So it was a toe, and then, how do you feel? Actually, my foot stopped hurting. Okay, so now, thank God every day for a toe in your foot. And kept going. It took a long time because she was so used to focus on the negative. And suddenly, her pain was getting better and better to the point that she just had a headache. Don't we do that? Focus on that little thing that's like, uh, 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 we forget all the blessings in our life. That goes to the next one, that's gratitude, right? What is working in your life? Well, the blessings, focus on what is working. And number seven, if you can, do some charity, do good. I guarantee you that no matter what we are going through, there is somebody out there that has a problem much worse than us. I'm from Brazil. And even when I'm having my problems here and I call my sister and she tells me the situation in the country, how many people in my family uh, now <coughs> lost their jobs, health insurance, I go, oh my God, I'm so blessed. So no matter what's going on, I'm not saying that your problem is not hurting or painful, because it hurts, but there is somebody out there. So when we start doing charity, we see that our problem is not as bad as we thought. So do some good. Go pick up trash in your street. <laughs> Clean up the beaches. Go call somebody that you haven't spoken to this person for a long time. Make somebody smile. You know, I love to just go to the grocery stores and just, hi, and you see a person like, this is weirdo. <laughs> you go, hi, and it's like, ding, ding. Did, did you notice the, the cashier? like? Thing. Did you find everything okay? It was okay now too. I see your face. Oh my God, look, you were like, <laughs> thing. And then I read the name. Not Hi, not honey. Target, though. Target cashews are great. Are great? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, and the last one is 
rejoice and celebrate once you overcome your trouble. Because you will. You will. That's a fact. I guarantee. Celebrate. Right? I need to throw a party now that I can put my food down after almost five months. <laughs> let's celebrate the good things. Call us, say, hey, let's go have pizza. Because I got it. It lasts three months, four months, whatever it could, could last a year. Right? God has faith in you. You are not alone. You are wonderful. You are very powerful. Have hope. And you can do it. And if you need our help, we are here for you. The spirits are there for you, your guardian angel. Because Joana de Angelis says, the misfortunes arise from the need to educate. We need to edu educate ourselves and it will help us to move toward our moral progress. That's it. So let's think about this week. All right, so now we're gonna do our meditation.